Hello, everyone. So this is going to be a really quick tutorial just to show you how to use some simple components like you can see here to do a closed transfer of liquid into a keg that's already got beer in it. You might be wondering why you'd want to do that. So carry on and watch the video if you want to find out. Okay, so let's just talk quickly about what I'm trying to achieve here. So the reason I want to transfer liquid into a keg that's already got beer in it is because the beer needs to be fined with some gelatin. It's not clearing up properly, and I want to basically add some gelatin in solution to the keg, which is what's in the bottle here. Now, in the past, I might have just opened the keg and poured that in there, closed it up, flushed it out, which is all fine, and I haven't had any major problems with that in the past before, but... If possible, I would rather do it where I don't have to open the keg. I don't need to expose it to any oxygen. I don't have the liquid splashing into the beer, possibly in the presence of extra oxygen, which could cause us problems. So what we're going to use is a simple gas-to-gas -gas jumper like this with two disconnects on it and a PET bottle with a carbonation plastic carbonation cap on the top there you could use a metal one as well i suppose and obviously the 500 ml pet bottle so this is as i said just some gelatin solution in the bottom other things that you might want to be adding into the keg so you could be putting in some uh camden tab in solution or potassium metabisulfate i think i hope that's the right word um for it if you are trying to prevent oxidization of it um, if that's something that you've forgotten to do before it's gone into the keg you could be adding like a hop tea or other kind of hop extracts or something if you want to liven it up and like i said um, all of that can be done if you use this kind of setup without actually opening the keg and introducing any air which if you've gone to the effort of doing closed transfers um maybe fermented under pressure flushing everything out and trying to keep uh all oxygen out of the brewing process or at least the packaging process obviously this is a way to maintain that even if you want to add something extra to the keg once you've um, got the beer into the corny so we're going to flush the bottle with the solution in it out with co2 first of all because obviously there'd be no point doing this if we we're actually going to be injecting um, air and possibly oxygen in with the liquid as well just before i do that one other thing that occurred to me as to why you'd want to do it this way rather than opening the keg if you've got beer in there that is already carbonated and at full pressure if we release all of the pressure off of that keg that's going to blast probably a lot of the sediment and um, any yeast that's collected or even hop debris on the bottom of the keg up into solution um which means you're going to have to wait for your keg to clear back down again as well. And if you're adding stuff for the purpose of fining like I am, obviously that's going to slow that process down even more as well. So, yeah. Um, also, if it's nearly at the top, you might have issues with it foaming out the keg and so on and so forth. Anyway, so like I said, this is going to be really quick and simple. I've got a high pressure line here, which is set to about, I think, 35 or 40 PSI or something like that. So I'm just going to connect that to the bottle and then flush that out. So I'm pretty confident that there is no air left in that now. What we want to make sure is that this is at a higher pressure than the keg. Now, this keg is about 15 PSI. This is about 40 PSI. That will be more than enough. The keg I'm finding is this one here. So I'm just going to disconnect the gas line from that i'm going to grab my little gas to gas jumper um, again the reason i want to do this through the gas line is so it drops the solution in at the top of the keg and doesn't blast it down through the dip tube again disturbing sediment and all of that kind of stuff from the bottom of the keg if you're using a floating dip tube then I guess you could use either one, but obviously this has got gas disconnects on it. This carbonation cap on the top will accept either a gas or a liquid disconnect, so it doesn't really matter from this end, but obviously it does um, for the post that you're attaching the keg to. So this is under pressure, keg is under lower pressure. All we need to do is then plug that into our little jumper down here. 
then just like that, we have fired our solution. There's a little bit left in the bottom. That's because the, uh, the disconnect has a sort of little bit of dip tube there, which is slightly higher than the further into the bottle than the neck. Um, so you'd obviously want to use a little bit more solution than what you're intending to add. But as you can see, that's worked pretty well. And um, yeah, hopefully I might give that keg a gentle swirl. Hopefully now that fining will help it all to drop out and be nice and bright within a few days. Let me know what you think of that, guys. Hopefully that might be helpful to some of you. Um, just to say, I didn't come up with this idea, by the way. I did see somebody else posting a picture of this on a group or a forum somewhere on Facebook. Apologies, I can't remember exactly what group or who it was that posted it, but kudos to that person. Um, I thought I'd make it into a video so that other people could benefit from that idea as well. So, yeah, no credit to me, apart from going to the effort of making the video, of course, but uh, cheers to whoever posted that up on um, on the group. Yeah, so thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing.